I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. We've previously reported here on the Midas Touch Network how special counsel Jack Smith secured an order by a federal judge compelling one of Donald Trump's lawyers, Evan Corcoran, to turn over his notes. Donald Trump and his lawyer asserted attorney-client privilege, claiming they didn't need to hand over the notes, but special counsel Jack Smith's team convinced the judge in March, federal judge Beryl Howell, who presides over the criminal grand juries at that time in Washington, D.C., made a ruling that the crime fraud exception applied, that Donald Trump was using Evan Corcoran in furtherance of his crime of obstruction of justice. But now we are learning in a new report the extent and nature of these notes, which include audio recordings that were taken by Evan Corcoran on his iPhone, where in narrative fashion, as though he was narrating a movie about the situation, he discussed what took place in all of his encounters with Donald Trump leading up to the time when he arrived at Mar-a-Lago, when the Department of Justice issued a subpoena back in May of 2022, when he met with the top counterintelligence official at the Department of Justice, Jay Blatt, back in uh, June 3rd of 2022, things that took place after that. These are extensive, extensive details um, that are all recorded on Evan Corcoran's iPhone, which the Department of Justice now has in its possession. And the Department of Justice has transcribed everything that Evan Corcoran discussed on his iPhone. And the uh, extent of it is about dozens and dozens of pages of notes that were taken from these audio recordings. This comes from a new New York Times report called Trump Lawyer's Notes, could be a key in the classified documents inquiry. Evan Corcoran recorded recollections of his legal work last year for Donald Trump. The recording is now in the hands of prosecutors, unnerving some aides to the former president. And the article talks about how turning on his iPhone one day last year, the lawyer, Evan Corcoran, recorded his recollections about a high profile new job representing former President Donald J. Trump in an investigation into his handling of classified documents. In complete sentences and a narrative tone that sounded as if it had been ripped from a novel, Mr. Corcoran recounted in detail a nearly month-long period of the documents investigation, according to at least two people familiar with the matter. Mr. Corcoran's narration of his recollections covered his initial meeting with Mr. Trump in May of 2022 to discuss a subpoena from the Justice Department seeking the return of all classified materials in Donald Trump's possession, people said. It also encompassed a search that Mr. Corcoran undertook last June in response to the subpoena for any relevant records being kept at Mar-a-Lago, Mr. Trump's private club and residence in Florida. He carried out the search in preparation for a visit by prosecutors who were on their way to enforce the subpoena and collect any sensitive material found remaining there. And that is very important for a number of reasons. You'll recall some of our other reports here on the Midas Touch Network about how special counsel Jack Smith's been focused on um, what three individuals were doing specifically right around the time a subpoena was issued um, by the Department of Justice in May of 2022. And these individuals, Walt Nauta, who was a former personal aide to Donald Trump at the White House and then worked and works with Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago. Someone by the name of Carlos de Oliveira, who was the head of maintenance at Mar-a-Lago. Someone by the name of Yusel Tavares. 
who is an IT worker at Mar-a-Lago. Um, we've reported how Walt Nauta was seen on surveillance footage in Mar-a-Lago that the Department of Justice subpoenaed moving boxes around at Mar-a-Lago, which contained classified material, and moved those boxes the day before the Department of Justice arrived at Mar-a-Lago on June 3rd when they met with Evan Corcoran in response to uh, the subpoena that they issued. This was before the search warrant was ultimately executed at Mar-a-Lago on August 8th because the Department of Justice was lied to by Evan Corcoran and another of Trump's lawyer, Christina Bob, who signed an attestation saying all documents were returned. They gave 38 more classified records in a red weld legal folder at that time. And it turns out there were hundreds of other classified records that were still at Mar-a-Lago, at least over 100 classified records, um, a ton of uh, folders with classified markings on them that were empty, and thousands of other government records that were at Mar-a-Lago. So these audio recordings of Evan Corcoran talk about what he was doing around this time period because he was the lawyer who was conducting the search to respond to the subpoena issued by the Department of Justice in May of 2022. Evan Corcoran was told, it appears by Walt Nauta and Donald Trump, that the only location where these classified documents or government records could have been in were in the storage room. That's not true. They were also in the basement and they were also found in Donald Trump's office when a search warrant was executed in August uh, of 2022. Also, what appears to have been taking place is that while Evan Corcoran was searching in the storage room, Walt Nauta would basically be moving boxes around and, and trying to change the place of them so Evan Corcoran would not find additional classified records that Donald Trump wanted to keep and that Corcoran would ultimately work with Christina Bob to sign this attestation um, under penalty of perjury saying all the documents were returned. But Nauta with Donald Trump would basically move the documents into another room when Evan Corcoran was not paying attention or when Corcoran was not in the storage room. That's one of the working theories of what we think special counsel Jack Smith is focused on. Um, we know that uh, federal judge Beryl Howell has also stated in her order compelling Evan Corcoran to turn over his notes and these audio recordings that uh, Donald Trump's gamesmanship with the National Archives and the DOJ leading up to the subpoena being issued by the Department of Justice was all part of a dress rehearsal to obstruct justice and to stop the Department of Justice from getting the documents that Donald Trump stole. Classified records, sensitive compartmented information, and thousands of other government records. We are learning from this report that Donald Trump is absolutely livid that Evan Corcoran made these audio recordings and this extensive recording in particular where Corcoran discusses all of his interactions with Donald Trump. And I'll, I'll give you one example where... Um, it could be very, very, very damaging for Donald Trump. One of the first things apparently that's on this recording is Edmund Corcoran talking about how Donald Trump asked him, do I really have to comply with this? Is this something that I have to respond to? And that could ultimately go to Donald Trump's intent of how he made efforts ultimately not to comply, but also that he was aware of his compliance obligations, but then had this separate team of Nauta and Carlos de Oliveira and potentially Yusel Tavares um, in various ways, whether they knew or whether they were being kind of used by Donald Trump as well. Um, they were all in a way of, of, of aiding Donald Trump in hiding these documents, whether knowingly or unwittingly. And that's one of the working theories that we have about what special counsel Jack Smith is focused on. Now, 
you may still be wondering, and I, I touched upon this at the beginning of the video, how did Jack Smith get these notes? It's because it was very diligent investigative work to identify that these recordings existed and notes existed. But normally communications between an attorney and their client would be kept confidential under the attorney-client privilege. However, that privilege can be defeated if you can show a federal judge that there is a commission of an ongoing crime, of, of a new crime, not simply that the lawyer is defending the client on a crime they're being uh, accused of, but that the lawyer is being used either knowingly or it could be unknowingly, but that the legal representation is being used to commit crimes. And so a finding was made by a federal judge that that took place, that the legal representation of Evan Corcoran to Donald Trump was being used to commit crimes. Think about how powerful that is. And based on that, Evan Corcoran's phone and notes turned over to the DOJ and voila, they discover this narrative style audio recording that is very long where Corcoran talks about all of his communications and interactions with Donald Trump. This will play a huge part in special counsel Jack Smith's criminal investigation of Donald Trump and his charging decision, which we believe is coming soon. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 1.5 million subscribers thanks to your incredible support. Check us out at patreon.com slash Midas Touch and wherever you get audio podcasts, subscribe to the Midas Touch podcast. Now, have a great day. We've got pride. Do you? We're celebrating Pride Month with a brand new collection of tanks, v-necks, and more. Go to store.midastouch.com right now and grab yours. Oh, and don't forget that koozie.